It's Dr. Wells, and I want to give you some information about the AHI, that's the Apnea Hypopnea Index. The AHI historically has been used to measure whether sleep apnea is present or not, and also determine how severe the condition is. So the higher the AHI, the worse your condition, and the longer you obstruct your airway, the worse your condition. However, that length of the airway obstruction isn't included in the AHI. It's just something that I would get a sense for if I delved deep into your sleep study. Now, the AHI is also measured by your CPAP machine, but in this case, I put some quotation marks around CPAP AHI because your CPAP machine doesn't know if you're asleep or awake, and it has a very rudimentary uh, function in, in measuring the AHI. So the CPAP AHI is not necessarily accurate, and there can be a little bit of slop, a little bit of wiggle room in the measurement, because from one night to the next, you have different uh, body positions, you may have alcohol or different medications on board that affect your breathing. Um, you might have influences with noise in the room or the stress from your day that factor into where your AHI is going. Now, the CPAP machine AHI should be, you know, variable within a couple of points, maybe up to five or 10 points. And I don't get excited when the CPAP CPAP AHI is below 10. If it's above 10, then I start to pay more attention and to ask deeper questions about what's going on for this person. Have there been any changes? Are there any new medical diagnoses? Do we need to take another look at the sleep study and see if something was suboptimal? So if your AHI from your CPAP machine is consistently below 10, and you feel good, you feel rested, and you're using CPAP throughout the night, don't worry that your AHI isn't like close to zero. In fact, normal, normal AHI is less than five. So even for folks who don't have obstructive sleep apnea, it doesn't mean that there's zero obstructions happening every night. It means that there's less than five airway obstructions per night, and it's thought that that is not going to cause any long-term harm. So take your CPAP AHI with a grain of salt. It's not as robust of a measurement as the sleep study AHI, but you can use it to uh, gauge how you're doing with CPAP, and it will certainly mean something if you've been writing less than 10 for the most part, and then for a night or two, you're up at 15, 20 or so. You want to think about what could be causing that increase and reach out for help if it doesn't make any sense, especially if you're symptomatic.